Welcome to our latest Media Employer event. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm your host, Rele. Uh, I'm a black man with no hair. I wear glasses and today I have on a gray t-shirt. Um, today we'll be talking about how you can help shape the UK's future. Reasons to work in the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, also known as BASE one of our unlimited empl employers. You'll learn how this government department makes a real difference to people's lives and how you can be a part of it. Um, before we get started, I'd like to say a few thank yous. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to Padra Jin and Debbie, our BSL interpreters, and Andrew for doing our closed captions. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And also thanks to my colleague, Toby, helping with the tech behind the scenes. Um, this is your opportunity to ask any questions you have about working at BASE. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box and they'll be answered in our Q&A session after the presentation. Um, I just want to check if our closed captions are working. Okay, I think it looks okay, great. So Meet the Employer is part of a series of webinars that we deliver for our Career Hive, a 24 seven accessible site full of tools, advice, and information on employment and employability for disabled candidates. And um, please Toby, could you put the Career Hive link in the chat box? Thank you. So feel free to go to our Career Hive and check it out after today's events. Okay, so I'd like to welcome Hannah, Catherine, Zoe, Selwyn and John from Bayes. I'll come to you one by one and please can you introduce yourself, your role and why you're here today. So let's start with Hannah. Thanks Rene and hi everyone. I'm Hannah and I'm part of the resourcing team here at BASE, so I'm here to tell you a bit more about the department. Um, I have long blonde hair, I'm wearing a bright blue jumper today and I'm working from home. Thank you. And then uh, same question to Catherine, please. Thank you, Relly. So my name is Catherine. I also work in our BASE HR resourcing team with Hannah. Um, I'm an older lady with short blonde hair and I'm wearing a black jumper. I'm based in our Cardiff office, but I'm working with Thanks, Rene. Thank you. And uh, next to Zoe, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Zoe. I have long brown hair, brown eyes, and I'm wearing a black and um, white jumper. And I am working from home today in my bedroom. Thank you, Zoe. Uh, sorry, thank you, Zoe. And Zoe, next, please. I'm Selwyn. Um, like the others, uh, I decided to work from home today, but there is a, a, we can always work in the office when necessary, as well as when we want to. Um, I am older than I look and younger in heart than I should be. I am, uh, for my age, I'm slim, uh, fair haired, and with no noticeable air cut, uh, um, eye colour at this distance, but with the blue shirt and the vague suit that I've got on the uh, on at the moment, they might look bluish against this greyish background that I'm against. Thank you, John. I'm, I must say that's a really nice suit you're wearing today. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So, um, and finally, John, please. Uh, John. I think you're on mute there, John. You okay?
Sorry, I think we have some technical difficulties. Okay. Sorry, right, John. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I'll I'll carry on. Maybe we'll come back later uh, when the computer uh, sorts itself out. Okay. So um, uh, let's get started uh, with the first question. So um, please tell us why disabled candidates should want to apply to work at Bayes. And I'll go to Hannah to answer that question for us, please. Thanks, Riley. Um, so at Bayes, we work on building a stronger and greener country. And the work we do as a government department is incredibly varied and makes a real difference to people both across the UK and internationally. So we lead on things like the UK's commitments to tackle climate change and driving a green economy. We support businesses to create jobs and increase opportunities across the country. And we also encourage investment and innovation to make the UK a science superpower by producing research that's going to improve lives. We lead on a lot of really high profile pieces of work. Um, so things you might have heard of recently include the delivery of the energy price cap. Our work on net zero in particular is hugely positive and has a massive impact. So we've done things like co-hosting the Climate Ambition Summit, where countries signed up to reaching net zero. We've also published um, our plan on how we're going to deliver net zero emissions by 2050, and also provided £12 billion of government investment to support the development of a quarter of a million green jobs. Our vision for the UK is for it to be a global hub of innovation, so we want to stimulate business growth and innovation and technologies to tackle some of the kind of big problems that we have in society. So things like investing into quantum technology and artificial intelligence, and also leading on the new space age in collaboration with colleagues at the UK Space Agency. Supporting growth across the country is really important for us. So we do things like providing investment in infrastructure, skills and innovation, and also things like providing security to UK businesses through introducing legislation to protect them from, from foreign takeovers. So there's a lot of varied work um, in the department, a lot of which is, is very exciting. Um, there's 5,000 colleagues in Bayes and we're based all across the country. So as well as a presence in London, we have offices in Birmingham, Cardiff, Darlington, Edinburgh and Salford. And we're always looking for new talent to come and join us. Um, and there's also opportunities within some of the groups within the department to work in Aberdeen and in Belfast. So I'm personally based in our Darlington office which is the new Darlington Economic Campus, um, which brings together lots of different government departments under one roof. So as well as Bayes, it's HM Treasury, um, Department for International Trade, and also the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, to name a few. Um, our Darlington office is actually quite new. Um, and it has some really great facilities. So it's been designed so that there are lots of different workspaces for you to use. So from desks, all of which are height adjustable, which is great, uh, to meeting rooms and different breakout areas. And a lot of thought has gone into the design of the building to make sure it's accessible for all. So all of the doors are opened with your pass automatically. The hot and cold taps are at different levels, so at wheelchair accessible level as well. And the one that um, shocked me the most of the first time I used it was our accessible microwaves, which have a verbal kind of countdown and notification that the contents may be hot. I've mentioned some of the work already that we do here at Bayes, and it means that we've got a variety of roles. So you can do lots of different things. You could be working on anything from fiber policy, to energy digitalization, to the UK EU trade cooperation agreement, to kind of clean heat analysis. So whilst we are largely a policy department, we have jobs across a variety of different professions, everything from project delivery, digital, HR, like where I am, communications, finance, commercial, as well as many others. So chances are there'll be a job in Bayes that will suit you and your skill sets. Um, 
We place a huge importance on transferable skills here in Bayes, so you don't have to have worked in the civil service before to come and join us. Um, and we're looking for people who bring a passion for what we do and new kind of ideas and thinking to, to our approach. One of the best things for me about working at Bayes is our culture and our benefits. So we have a really inclusive culture here and focus on supporting everyone to be the best that they can be. Um, as well as being a disability confident leader, which you'll hear a little bit about more, a little bit more about later. Um, my experience of the department has been really, really positive and that colleagues really care about each other and, and go the extra mile to support each other. Um, we've got some great benefits, which I found really good. So things like flexible and hybrid working. You'll notice a lot of us working from home today. Um, and that really allows us to maintain a good kind of work-life balance and, and balance our commitments. <coughs> we also um, have a real focus on learning and development, which is something that, that I really like. So we want to support people to progress their careers here. So there's lots of development and promotion opportunities. So we offer things like apprenticeships. So for example, our autism exchange program for those aged 18 to 25. We also have internships, we have formal qualifications. And then there's also lots of informal learning opportunities as well. So from shadowing more senior colleagues to attending different meetings and finding out more about kind of the different teams across the department. We also have a really strong and empowered network, um, networks in place across the department. So these groups um, are colleagues across the department who will come together and they play, play a really vital role in us being um, inclusive um, and recognizing difference and celebrating that. Um, we really want everyone to feel like they belong here so um, our networks include things like faith and minority ethnic, um, mental health and well-being, LGBT+, social mobility, women empowered, and of course, our Capability Action Network, which you're going to be hearing um, a bit more about in, in today's presentation. Um, everyone at Bayes wants to make sure it's a really great place to work um, and everyone feels really valued and can be their authentic selves. And I'm really hoping that kind of following um, this session, you'll, you'll want to come and join us. So we have lots of jobs um, available at the moment. We're always hiring, so make sure you keep an eye out. But I did just want to flag that if you're interested in policy roles, we've actually got some um, really big campaigns open at the moment with a closing date of Sunday. So if it's policy that you're interested, make sure you get on, on the Even Break website and have a look at those jobs that are closing on Sunday. Thanks, Riley. Thank you, Hannah. Oh, that was uh, brilliant, like useful information. And, you know, for all those, um, like the policy vacancies uh, closing on Sunday, uh, we'll ensure that people go to our website, the Even Break website, and apply for those. Okay, so thanks for that. So um, I'm going to move on to the second question now. And uh, the second question is, um, can you tell us about how Bayes uses the Disability Confidence Scheme to support disabled candidates in the recruitment process? And I'll go to Catherine to answer that for us, please. Thank you, Raleigh. I can. Um, so we are proud to be a disability confident leader. And in Bayes, we operate the Disability Confidence uh, Scheme, which is also known as DCS. So what is DCS? Um, and for those of you not familiar with this scheme, this is key for us to support disabled candidates who meet the minimum selection criteria in our recruitment process. Um, we want to encourage you to apply for our job roles and show your skills, talent and abilities at interview stage. To be considered for an interview under the DCS scheme, you must have a disability or long term health condition and demonstrate that your application meets the minimum selection criteria, which is set out by the vacancy holder for the job role. When you apply for one of our job roles, under DCS, you are automatically guaranteed to have an interview if you meet the minimum benchmark scores set by the recruitment panel in Bayes. However, 
This is not the case for candidates who do not apply under DCS as they can meet the minimum criteria but not score highly enough to secure an interview. Um, so who is eligible? So all candidates who identify as being disabled or have a long-term health condition can apply for one of our base job roles. Disabilities include visual disabilities and also hidden disabilities, such as mental health uh, and neurodiversity. Um, and some examples are autism, ADHD, dyslexia and dyspraxia. When you apply for one of our exciting roles, I would encourage you to apply into the DCS scheme as this has helped us to interview many talented candidates and has also increased the number of disabled candidates that we recruit into Bayes. And just to reassure you that you do not need to provide us with any evidence that you have a disability to apply under DCS. Um, I would also like to share with you some of the key work that Zoe Walker and I have been doing to support disabled candidates in Bayes. Zoe, who has joined us on our panel today, is a member of our Bayes Disability Network, also known as CAN, uh, Capability Action Network. Zoe and I have been working together to look at ways for Bayes to remove or minimise barriers to make our recruitment process as inclusive and accessible for disabled candidates as possible. We have produced a disability confident and adjustment candidate guidance document, which we now include with all our Bayes job adverts. Our guidance covers information about the disability confidence scheme and includes some examples of the adjustments that you can request when you apply for one of our exciting roles. I will share more about the adjustments that we support in Bayes when I talk to you about our recruitment process and some helpful hints and tips later on in our session. I hope this helps. Thank you, Rene. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you for that um, useful information. And I'm sure we'll talk about it a bit more later. Um, my next question is, um, how does Bayes' disability network support disabled people in Bayes? And um, I'll go to Zoe to answer that one for us, please. Sorry, I was just taking myself off mute there and I'm going to put myself on camera as well. There you go. So I'm going to tell you a bit about the um, CAN Network to start with and CAN Network stands for Capability Action Network. And it's here to support staff with long term health conditions, disabilities and neurodiversity. The network also welcomes anyone and everyone within BASE who wishes to understand and support disabled colleagues or those of long term health conditions and neurodiversities. The group itself provides advocacy, advice, signposting for disabled colleagues in BASE. CAN has a number of different interest groups which are here to offer support and advice to all colleagues and it's a safe place to be for them as well. And I think that is discussed in that room leaves that room, whether it's virtual or in person. Our current interest groups are autism, cancer support, dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, epilepsy, hearing impairment, migraine and vestibular disorders, stammering, visual impairment, long COVID, and chronic fatigue. And we're currently setting up a support group on pain management as well. And there'll be an element of um, fatigue and being discussed in that group as well. We're always open to opening up new interest groups. Like with the CAN steering group I'm on, the interest groups are run by volunteers. So if a new one needs to be set up for a different health condition, we need a volunteer to help run it. Um, to help support staff that don't fall under one of those interest groups, we're in the process this year of setting up a Yes You Can events, which are here to help empower staff um, to feel empowered by their disability long-term health conditions, to discuss, to, to discuss um, common topics such as loneliness, um, stress, burnout, um, and also things around learning and development as well. So we're hoping that'd be something for everybody. We've also got a Coffee Connect, 
um, for our members, which helps them to meet up um, with different members of the network to offer advice and support. And this is also there for allies to learn a bit more about long-term health conditions, disability and neurodiversity. So we want this network to be for all, but we're, our main purpose is to help support members of the network who have a disability and long-term health condition. If anyone has any questions, they can come to us and ask us anything confidentiality confidentially and we'll do our utmost to help to support them as well and to point them and signpost staff in the right direction to empower them. Thank you Zoe. So that's really good to hear about CAN and how they support uh, disabled staff at base. Um, that's um, it's good to hear that. Um, so um, what I wanted to ask as well is um, if you could tell us uh, about your role in Bayes and the support that you receive from Bayes. And uh, I'll go back to Zoe for that one, please. Um, yes, of course, I, I can go into that. And um, before I was at Bayes, I have worked at other departments, such as the Department for Education and what was the Ministry of Housing, which is now known as the Department for Leveling Up and Communities. Um, but since I've been at Bayes, um, my current role is in is a project management officer and I'm working on as the lead for the internal matrix system which looks at creating a new system for HR and finance across government but our role is to look at how we can ensure that Bayes as a department has everything it needs in place to support its staff through finance and HR. So to do this in my current role um, as a project manager I'm implementing tools such as keeping the project on track using planning tools, risk tools, issue, dependency, benefits and assurance trackers. Um, I enjoy project management in base because there's a very supportive community. There's the project management um, network where you can ask for advice and support on anything through our regular monthly meetings to their dropping sessions that they put on to their team's channel that they have. And they um, also encourage like learning and development as well um, through um, which I'll touch on in a bit. Um, outside of my day-to-day -day role, um, I'm heavily involved in a CAN network, as I mentioned before, where I lead on communication and events. Um, I've led on workshops around office design, which has helped me learn facilitation skills. I've also set up events for Purple Light Up, where we celebrate um, disability and create awareness. My work with CAN has helped me to refine my network and skills, communication skills and presentation skills. Through my role in CAN, I work closely with HR on inclusive recruitment and I enjoy working with CAN because it's like having a small family. Um, in past roles um, at Bayes, I've also worked on a transformation program where I've set up um, workshops to help improve the culture within my directorate. I've also previously worked on um, a number of other schemes such as um, the Warm Homes Discount Team which um, helps to improve heating for members of the public's homes. In this role, I also use my project management skills to keep an eye on the risk and issues and ensure that the planning was running smoothly. Those roles I found really interesting and stretching. Um, as part of um, L&D, there have been a number of different learning development opportunities. Um, for example, I've been able to do a number of different courses. I've recently passed my APM course, which is a project management course. Um, which was paid for um, by the department as well. And we um, set up like a little Teams channel to offer it, anyone who was on that course a bit of support. Um, but it doesn't just have to be courses. I've also been able to um, do um, little mini projects as part of my corporate responsibility to um, increase my skills, for example, around business cases. Um, I've also been able to shadow other members of staff to learn from them as well. And there's also coaching and mentoring opportunities within Bayes, and I've been part of their mentoring programme. I'm currently looking for a coach. Um, but to help me be the best that I can be in a workplace, one of the things I've had to, have to put in place is workplace adjustments. So at Bayes, I have a number of these workplace adjustments, and I previously just mentioned that I used to work at another government department, and these reasonable adjustments, even during lockdown, moved with me. So my standing desk, um, at, which I had at 
um, department of leveling up and my ergonomic chair mouse keyboard um, at home moved with me so I didn't have to send it back and ask for a new one which makes life a lot easier because you have everything that you need in place. Um, also I have that helps in my joint hypermobility around chronic pain and fatigue. Um, I also have other hard reasonable adjustments for my dyslexia and dyspraxia which include read write software and and a mind view where I can um, mind map my ideas that are in my head and it also helps write out reports. I also have in place soft reasonable adjustments which helps with both conditions. I have flexible working which means I can start later um, as well and it also means that sometimes I can take more time at lunch to be able to do my physiotherapy and stretches and that means I do finish a bit later sometimes as well. Um, I can take time I'm off for short breaks for meditation and stretches and to have a cognitive break. Um, I ask my line manager to provide me with clear information where there's no jargon and metaphors to ensure I understand what's being asked of me clearly. And I found it easy to get the adjustments I need. Even and when I review my adjustments and I find that I need something new, it's been a straightforward process. For example, when I was having joint issues with my hand due to my joint hypermobility syndrome, I was able to request Dragon software from VHR team and it was implemented um, reasonably quickly for me. And there was also some training to learn how to use it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. Um, You've done quite a lot of things and uh, congratulations on passing your latest uh, training and everything. It's good to hear. Thank you. And um, what about Selwyn? Can we have Selwyn's experiences, please? Okay, so um, you wanted to hear first, I think, about uh, my roles and maybe something about my work with CAN. That's right. Um, so I will start first with um, what, what, where I work and what area I work in and the policy area. And then I'll talk a bit about what my present job role is. So I work in nuclear policy, which is the heart of the UK's clean energy strategy. My area is linked to safety management of nuclear legacy and engagement with all of our stakeholders. The idea of um, nuclear is to help support the aim of reducing carbon in the economy by getting 24 gigawatts worth of, of electricity being produced by 2050. BES has in it um, three large directorates that work on nuclears that are called the nuclear cluster. And I work in one of those. I'm one of the senior policy advisors working on emergency planning for civil nuclear incidents, leading on exercise and, insur and assurances against this. This work involves training and preparing staff inside BES to be able to deal with the possibility, the rare possibility that is, of a nuclear emergency and test our people to be able to actually take part and be able to take part in these uh, unlikely events. Um, during these exercises, I get them to do a range of things. And because this work is, of course, related to a large lot of um, different um, organizations across government when we do these testings. Um, I tend to look, work with a large range of government departments and organizations such as the Environment Agency, Food Standards Agency and UK Health Safety Agency and local authorities and industries when we ensure that we test the plans that are out there in the local authorities to make sure that if an incident occurs we are prepared to to make sure that we protect the environment, the people and uh, around these areas. As well as this, I work um, with glo globally with UN agencies like, such like as the International Atomic Ener Agency and also other organizations like the Nuclear, uh, um, Nuclear Energy Agency on these kind of issues. Um, similar to um, Zoe, um, when I'm not working on these nuclear issues, I am one of the CAN leadership and I specialize in gathering intelligence of what is affecting disability peoples with inside organizations, not just BES, and looking across the departments and across the whole of the civil service, as I'm also a member of the civil service disability network that looks after the disabilities um, issues across the whole of government. And from this, I'm able to bring to BES 
um, the best knowledge there are from other government departments to improve uh, looking after um, disabled staff, or in quite a lot of cases, some of the great work that has been done by Zoe and um, Catherine in trying to improve in the recruitment system that I'm championing across with other departments to hopefully make them better at being more um, uh, able to assist more people with disability recruitment. And I'll hand it back to our leader in this um, thing to carry on. Thank you, Sally. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, I don't know if John is able to, is a hard things there, John? Any luck at all? Hang on. Oh. Ah. Just going to turn the volume down because then. Um, okay. Hi, can you hear me now? Hi, John. Yes, I can hear you now. Loud and that? clear. You okay? Can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. So I, I do apologise for the. Um, the problem we've had with this, I don't know what's, what's causing it, but um, anyway, thanks for bearing bearing with us. No, that's um, okay. Um, yeah, Take I work in the uh, <laughs> HR department, the organisational design team for that, and uh, I've been in Bayes about three years, um, joined from another government agency. So my job is to support managers with um, organisational design and change management projects, which which. Um, so these sort of things we work on are, for example, setting up the vaccine task force when it was first set up and then moving it from Bayes to the UK Health, Health um, Agency um, last year and um, moving the uh, moving some work from the UK Space Directorate to a new um, Bayes um, organisation as part of the um, Space Policy um, Directorate in Bayes. Um, currently, I'm working on um, an organisation which is being set up for Great British Nuclear, which is um, similar to the world Selwyn lives in. Um, we're trying to create an agency that's going to boost nuclear power development across the country. Um, so we're setting that, that organisation up from scratch. So I'm involved in lots of change projects, work with lots of project teams, um, which, is, which is really interesting. And um, I've also had the opportunity to have um, a fair bit of training on organisational developments and consulting skills and things like that. Um, the adjustments I've needed um, are due to my visual impairment, which I've had um, sort of significantly for about 15 years. So I've been using um, screen reading um, and enlargement magnification software for about 15 years. Um, and in Bayes, um, you know, it's been provided very smoothly, very, very straightforwardly. Um, I also have a sort of large font keyboard, but apart from that, um, there aren't really any other hard adjustments that I that I need. What I would say about Bayes, um, and I've worked for a lot of different organisations, mainly in the private sector, but also for another government agency, is that the culture here is is very supportive for people with with a um, disability. So I find that, for example, um, when I discuss the issues I have with my colleagues, it's it's a very supportive environment. And the sort of adjustments that are equally useful for me are, for example, um, being able to ask my colleagues to cover for a few bits of work, which I find particularly difficult, like um, creating very detailed um, PowerPoint presentations, which just take me longer because of the visual impairment. So other people are happy to help with that, leaving me to do other things that I'm, I'm sort of not impaired in doing. So the culture here is really good. And... Um, I found that line management support is also is also good. Um, so I, I, I'd certainly recommend Bayes as a place to work. It's also got a good um, civil service wide um, approach to disability. So, for example, I'm involved in um, the civil service wide visual network. I'm involved in running that, and that um, that works with the, the local Bayes visual interest group. So that's all for me for the moment, but I'm happy to answer any questions later. Thank you, John. Thanks for uh, managing to get back on and sharing your story with us. It was, it was worth the wait. <laughs> uh, excellent. Okay, so I'm just wary of time, so I'm just gonna uh, carry on. So um, 
Uh, and my next question is, um, how does Bayes support disabled candidates with adjustments in their recruitment process? And uh, we'll go to Catherine to answer that one, please. Thank you, Rene. So as I mentioned earlier, Bayes, um, in Bayes, we are committed to providing adjustments uh, for disabled candidates, both at application and interview stages of our recruitment process. Um, so if you do need any adjustments when you apply for one of our roles, we do want to support you, even if you don't feel that you're eligible to apply under the, the DCS scheme. Um, what can we do to support you to apply for one of our roles? So reasonable adjustments um, means the things that we can do to change or amend in our recruitment process to ensure that you can perform at your best. When you apply for a role in Bayes, you will have the opportunity to request any reasonable adjustments um, that you need when you complete your ap online application form. And all our roles um, are advertised through the Civil Service Jobs Portal, which you can also access through Evenbreak. Some examples of adjustments that Bayes can support include at application stage, when you apply for a Bayes job, you can ask for extra time to complete your online application or to prepare for a presentation by email in the recruiting line manager. At interview stage, you could ask for information in your preferred format. So for example, braille or bigger font, British sign language support, behavior questions in advance of your interview, extra time to answer questions at interview and your, for your interview to be held in person rather than virtually using Microsoft um, Teams. This is not an exhaustive list of the adjustments that we support in Bayes. We will work closely with you to put uh, in place any adjustments that you need to request to ensure that you feel comfortable and that you are able to perform at your best. This is not, um, sorry, a, a recent example um, of us being able to support uh, a neurodiverse candidate with an adjustment request is that our interview panel shared the behavior questions with the candidate an hour before the start of their virtual interview. The, that adjustment meant that the candidate had the time they needed to read and process the question prior to joining their interview. In addition, the panel typed the interview questions into the, team, into the Teams chat uh, to further support the candidate to be able to perform at their best. Um, as I say, these are just um, a few examples of how we can support you when you for, apply for a job role with us. I hope this helps. Thank you, Rene. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks for sharing that with us. And um, so tell me, um, what does Bayes' recruitment process look like and how can candidates make their application stand out? Thank you, Rene. Um, so in Bayes, we regularly run um, how to apply for Bayes roles sessions to help candidates. Um, and we will provide a link in our Bayes profile page on even break shortly. Um, in Bayes, we use civil service uh, success profiles to assess candidates in our recruitment process. And you will find a link to this information in all our Bayes job adverts. Each of our job adverts will clearly tell you which elements of the civil service profiles that you will be assessed against at both application and interview stages. In most cases, we will use civil service behaviours to assess you. So what are behaviours? Behaviours are used to test how you meet the criteria of the job role. And so you will need to use your best example to provide the recruitment panel with the evidence of how you meet each behaviour. Some hints and tips to help you to stand out when you write your application is to look carefully at the job description and also the person specification in the job advert and think about your best examples to demonstrate that you meet the behaviours, experience and skills needed. Refer to the civil service success profiles before you start your application form so you can familiarise yourself with the information and the evidence 
that the panel will be looking for in your examples. We recommend that you use the staff situation, task, action, result model to structure your example. The STAR model can be helpful, but it's not mandatory and it's not the only way that you can frame your evidence for each behaviour required. But just remember to, that you must have a beginning. So the what, what does the panel need to know? What was you trying to achieve? A middle, which is the how, how did you approach the task? The main themes, for example, what stakeholders were involved? What, communica what communication channels did you use? Information that you gathered, analysis that you undertook, and an end, which is the outcome. What did you achieve to quanti quantify it? Ensure you keep to the maximum word limit as, um, as much as possible to provide the, um, <clears throat> the depth of detail and evidence needed for the panel to be able to give you the best score possible. Do not use acronyms or jargon and use I, not we. The panel are interested to know what you did. We check your application and ask for a second opinion to check that you have fully covered what is required before you submit your application. Excuse me, Catherine, sorry to interrupt you. This is Corrigan, the other sign language interpreter. I'm so sorry that I'm late, but I need to um, swap with Debbie, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for your CV to stand out, ensure it's up to date and current and explain any employment gaps. Keep your employment history concise. Start with your latest role, including dates first. Tailor your previous skills and experience and include what is relevant specifically for the job role that you're applying for. We see a lot of CVs where it's clear that the candidate hasn't tailored uh, their CV to the job advert. So writing yours in this way will help you to stand out. For your personal statement to stand out, check the personal specification and any essential criteria required in our job advert and tailor your statement to what is being asked for. Provide detail of how your personal skills qualities and experience provide evidence of your suitability for the role. Again, I encourage you to provide examples as close to the maximum word limit as possible to provide the depth of detail and evidence needed. Simply providing a statement uh, will not provide the panel with the evidence that they need to fully assess you and give you the best possible score. To stand out at interview, refer again to the civil service uh, success profiles before your interview. Include examples with a clear connection to each of the behaviours that you need to evidence and ensure that your example provides evidence in the STAR format or use an alternative format that works for you but to remember to include the, the what, the how and the outcome. Remember it's your time to shine Show that you're the right candidate for our job role. Sell your achievements, your strengths and your successes. It's not boasting, it's being honest and it's not being afraid to shout out about what you have done and what you can do. These are just a few tips to help you to stand out. We encourage you to contact our Bayes HR resourcing team and the recruiting manager if you need any help or guidance or have any questions about the job role, any adjustments, and or our recruitment process. Our base HR resource and team email will be shared with you at the end of our session. And um, thank you, Rene. I hope this helps and answers your question. Thank you, Catherine. So the, that was with some really good tips there. Sorry. Yeah. So um, if you like, sorry, someone trying to say something. Oh, it's John. You, okay, you're you're on mute, John.
I'm not sure John was trying to come in. I think Bele maybe. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, I'll just carry on then. So um, what was I saying? Um, oh yeah, that's it. Um, so if you like what you've heard so far and you want to check out the latest vacancies from Bayes, then go to their profile page on the Even Breaks website to apply. Um, I, I believe the link is in the chat box. And you know you can find out more about Bayes as well on that page, on the profile page. So, um, okay. So we've gone through everything now. So we're going to move on to the Q and A uh, section, and we'll answer any questions in the Q and A box. Okay. So um, I'm just going to have a look now, and then I'll read out your questions, and then we'll get someone from Bayes to answer for us, please. So we have five at the moment. So um, the first question I can see here is, someone says, I'm a second year economics student enrolled on a sandwich year course where I'm able to work in an industry for a year. Does Bayes have roles like that available for us to apply to? Would you like me to read it out again? Um, so, so really, yes, we do offer sandwich placements in Bayes, um, and that would be something we could take forward with the profession. So if that particular candidate wanted to provide their details and we could take that um, and have that conversation separately, if that would be helpful. Okay. So um, could they send that question to uh, that email address you gave me, is it recruitment at bays.gov.uk? Yes. Thank okay. you, Bailey. All right, then. Thanks for that. And um, we have another question here. <laughs> and it says, hi, can I apply for more than one role at once? And I'm guessing that like, at a time, can I apply for more than one role at, at once? Shall I take that one? Yes, please. Um, sure. So, so the answer is yes. Um, you can apply for more than one role at one time. Um, we have lots of roles all live at, at the same time, often over 100. So please do submit more than one application if there are multiple roles that interest you. Thank you for that. Okay. And... Um, my next question I have here in the Q&A box is, if, I, if I've got a gap in my CV, will it affect my chances? Shall I take this one again? Yes, please. Um, <laughs> so no, we understand that people have gaps in employment for various different reasons. Um, I would just suggest that you kind of outline why you might have had that gap on your CV, but we're really interested in your skills and your experiences. So a gap in your CV would not stop you from applying and potentially being successful in getting one of our roles here at Bayes. Okay, thanks for that. And um, another question here. It says, I think the lady mentioned there were different Bayes offices in different parts of the UK. Do you have a list? Yes, we do. Um, and we can share that in, in the information we send out afterwards. But yep. the, the locations that we're actively recruiting into at the moment on kind of a big scale um, are London, Birmingham, Cardiff, Darlington, Edinburgh and Salford. Okay. Thanks for that. So we'll send some more info in the email after the event. Um, another question here, I've got quite a few actually. <laughs> um, hey everyone, sorry, I'm not sure what some of the base people mean by a policy role. What do those jobs involve and do I need experience? Who'd like to take that one? I'll have a bash at that one. Oh, go on, sorry. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> I won't say that I'm an expert on policy, but I'll have a go at it. Um, 
policy is about coming up with ideas and uh, options for people to achieve the strategic goals of the ministers or the department's aims. So it's how coming up with a, an ideas and plans that we put forward and test towards um, achieving the policies of the government. Um, that, array, that is a range of different things um, and a range of different policy areas um, is, is um, done, we do with that. I did this in, in forms of uh, dealing with legislation mm -hmm. uh, when we moved out of Europe and we started looking at how to do some of the legislation in the UK, I would come up, I would analyze the legislation in the UK and compare it to the EU legislation and come up with a policy options of what is the best way to keep the public safe and uh, look after the public in relation to what I was working on that was nuclear safety. So it's a range of things to do with coming up with ways of achieving the go government roles. Um, and this is usually done by writing up papers of options, putting submissions to ministers and briefing ministers in relation to what is going on. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else want to expand on that or is, is that enough? Should I move on to the next question? If anyone did want more details um, about a specific policy role, um, we outline kind of the sorts of activities that you would do in each job description. So do go away and have a look at some, some specific vacancies about the sorts of activities you might be doing as a policy advisor. Brilliant, thank you, Hannah. Thanks for clarifying that. And um, we've got another question, but I think it's similar to one we've had already. What if your employment gap is decades? Does that count against or? I think what I said before still stands in that case. You know, we understand that people will have gaps in their CV. We're really keen to hear about your skills and your experience and what you can bring to the department. So um, please go ahead and submit um, an application anyway. OK, thanks. And um, got another one here. Um, Hi, my background is biomedical science. I did that at uni. <laughs> and I was a lab technician in, for a in vitro diagnostic company in Strilling. I was, oh, I don't know if that's Sterling, Strilling. I was made redundant because of my recent ADHD diagnosis. What kind of jobs do you recommend for me to look for with my scientific background? That's a good one. Um, and I don't have a specific answer to that. So we have lots of different jobs at lots of different times, some of which will really value that scientific background. So thinking about some of the policies that we write, you know, that, that experience is really, really valuable. So there's a real range of jobs you could apply for with that kind of background. So I can see you've come off camera. I don't know if you wanted to jump in um, with anything on that. Yeah, I don't have like a scientific background at all, but I just wanted to say is have a look at base jobs and don't be scared about applying for any roles with a scientific background where you feel as though that takes your interest. And um, because with the ADHD diagnosis, base would want to support you and ensure that you have the right reasonable adjustments in place. And that could be um, soft, you know, um, soft reasonable adjustments where you discuss it with your line manager. So if you're fidgeting in a meeting or something, Thing, like in your hands that they know it's not because you're not paying attention it's because this, is, this helps you pay attention or it could be a soft adjustment where the emails are really clear and concise so you understand what's being asked of you um, it could be um, some um, like particular type of notification on your computer to notify you when you need to attend a meeting just in case you're hyper focusing it could be looking at potentially job carving as well where the role plays more to your strengths and um, with your ADHD um, depending on the type of assessment you have at base sometimes you might be offered a coach to help you understand the different tools you can put in place and um, for your ADHD as well so I would just say don't be worried about what kind of um, scientific role because Bayes would want you to apply for a role that you have an interest in and will then support you through the different types of reasonable adjustments, whether it's through 
application stage where you might have a bit more time to write your application to um, the adjustments you can get at interview stage where you might receive your, um, interview questions in advance to onboarding with some of the stuff I mentioned as well. Okay, thank you Zoe. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, five questions left. Um, we've got four minutes left to the hour. So I don't know if we could go through these ones quickly or if um, I could leave them to send in an email, but we'll try and go through them quickly. Um, so just quick answers. This is just a general question. What's your favorite thing about things about working for BASE? I'll jump in on that one. So I'm quite okay. new to the department, but okay. my favorite things are definitely the culture it feels very inclusive and very friendly but all I, also it's a really forward thinking department that gets stuff done and the work we're doing is so important and so exciting in terms of kind of the future of the UK that you know I'm constantly learning new things here and hearing about the great work that we're doing so yeah that's what I really like about the department. Okay thanks for that Hannah. Can I just, can I just jump in as well Rani and just quickly yeah. say I know we've limited the time, is how diverse the department is as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I will just sort of welcome, you know, every, everybody to come into the department. Um, yeah, so just how diverse we are as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that. <laughs> it's like speed dating. Um, what admin jobs does Bayes have and where are their offices? Um, I can't answer the phone due to speech issues, but can do everything else. Can I want to take that one? Sorry, I was just going to echo what Zoe said about, mm. um, you know, we can support adjustments. So um, look for what job this person is interested in um, and then we can have that conversation. And a lot of our work is done by a sort of, um, you know, sort of electronic means. So it's not necessarily about answering the telephone. So I really wouldn't focus on, uh, about that. It really, I'm really echoing um, what Zoe said later on about the adjustments that could be put in place. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. Um, I think we've answered this already. I'm not too sure. Is there an office in Glasgow? Because that's where I'm based. Is there a base office in Glasgow? Um, Glasgow isn't one of the offices that we're actively kind of recruiting into at the moment but I would say that sometimes things change, but we do have an office in Edinburgh and that will be advertised on, on the majority of, of the vacancies that we have. Okay, thank you, Hannah. Um, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. How does your employment criteria impact, impact on candidates around the ages of 50 and above? Our, um, our applications are blind, so the person um, I'm doing the sifting would not know how old you are. So like what I said with everything else, no matter what your age, apply for the role that interests you. And um, if you need any adjustments to help support you, um, BASE will help you. Um, it, we don't discriminate against age and we don't know what age anyone is who is applying for a role. Um, the same with your name. We wouldn't know the person's name who is applying for a role. It's completely blind sifted. We wouldn't know what universities um, you went to where you had took your degree after. This is to help um, remove any unconscious bias that anybody might have towards anyone. And anyone and also makes um, the recruitment a lot more fair and, and inclusive. And if I can just jump in and say, um, yeah. so I'm, I'm an older lady in my 50s and there's opportunities for everybody in Bayes. So I definitely, age is not an issue in Bayes. Okay, thank you for that. So uh, we're running out of time. So um, I'm just gonna say uh, thank you to, um, everyone uh, so yeah if we've missed any questions and my apologies i will send the answers to you by email okay so because of time purposes this brings us to the end of our session with Bayes. Uh, thank you very much for attending um hannah catherine 
Zoe, Selwyn and John. Uh, thank you for your time today and your patience. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, Toby uh, Padrojin, sorry if I didn't pronounce it properly. Debbie and Andrew, thanks for your help today. Um, I hope you feel your questions have been answered and we look forward to seeing you at our next Meet the Employer session. Don't forget to check out our other events on the Careers Hive website. Um, Toby, if you could please put the link for the Career Hive events page in the chat box. Uh, maybe you've done that already. So uh, all that's left to me to say is have a great day, everyone. Thanks for coming and bye. Yeah. <laughs>